Welcome to Dark Sorcery. I'm Alfredo Martinez, and I have with me Anima Noira. Good to have you on. Hey, devil's greetings. Yes, yes. And um, so how did your magical path uh, begin? Oh, man, it's it starts with birth for many of us. That's kind of how I see it now, because my father was an occultist and I even speculate that he intended to summon me in some way because I had a ritualistic conception. There was a story in the family about, you know, how my parents went about it, special place, special time. I don't think my mother knew entirely what was going on because to her it was like, yeah, like, let's do this thing, conceive a child. And then they went to the church and burned candles and prayed. But he made an astrological chart of mm -hmm. the conception and then of my birth and they didn't do that with my younger two siblings mm -hmm. so i think he always saw something special in me like and i wanted to teach me these things that's how i came to the occult actually through my father mm -hmm. and your uh your mother was not into the occult as much as your father was no she she wasn't they even had arguments about this when mm -hmm. I was growing up, she was kind of enamored with him because he was a very charismatic speaker. I think he even like abused magic to kind of control my right. mother. She had a mental illness. I think she believed that like he protected her perhaps from the things that she was seeing. It was a it was a strange setup for sure to be born into and then you know, my, my father believed that they knew each other from past lives, that he was a vampire. Yeah. <laughs> it was, I, and I didn't like, you know, when I was a child, I thought it was just like old wife's tales. Just like, oh, you know, he's a con man. He just has these stories that he would impress women right. at a party. But the older I got, the more I realized, well, it was all true. Yeah, I mean, eventually you get to a point where you do realize truth is stranger than fiction. The it more, is. The more you dig into stuff or whether the spirit realm wants to reveal those things to you, um, you come to a realization. Now, uh, a lot of people in the left-hand path, uh, a lot of people, a lot of occultists tend to have a, a, you know, were raised in a religious background, obviously, that wasn't the case for you. What was it like uh, growing well, up? Well, actually, it was. And, you really? know, and that's where it becomes like really weird because my parents were both converts to Catholicism. They came from atheist uh -huh. backgrounds. Okay. But at that time in Czechoslovakia, uh, you know, the Catholic Church was very minority and it was seen as opposing the regime. So it attracted a lot of alternative types who would otherwise not go there. So they were both baptized like in secret and they met in the underground spiritualist circles in the late 1980s but they would hang out with the buddhists you know with the yogis it, it was just like the spiritual underground you know in in communist czechoslovakia and then they put me into catholic schools mm -hmm. and girl scouts and you know parish um catholic groups the youth groups which i hated because right. they wanted a good education for me. They haven't gone through it themselves. So I guess it didn't dawn on them like what it's actually like. I fucking hated it. You know, I, yeah. I became a Satanist, a witch. I would like dress in black. I would have a metal goth boyfriend. Yeah. Um, so I actually, I kind of had both, you know. I was like born in hereditary lineage, but also grew up religious. Was that... Is, is there like um, any occult books that have inspired you that you grew up I was, reading? I was, given, I was given a lot of books like encyclopedias um, mm -hmm. in particular from, you know, the old generation of psychiatrists, writings about the mysterious and the paranormal. I didn't really appreciate it growing up and I kind of regret it. Because it had all these inscriptions, like for my 11th birthday or 12th birthday. I got the tarot, the thought tarot from Aleister Crowley. Right. Interpreted by the German psychoanalyst Adrian Ziegler. So that's kind of what I used for self-exploration for a decade. 
mm -hmm. before I got anything else. That was definitely a significant influence on me, Alistair Crowley, in those early years. Okay, so were you drawn to books like um, The Book of the Law, 777, Magic in Theory and Practice? I got, I got a copy from my father of Magic in Theory and Practice, the original from the 1940s. Mm, okay. But I definitely, I definitely read that, and I liked the scientific approach to magic. It was very mm. modern, you know. It was, it was groundbreaking. Okay. Now, a lot of times, I'll ask my guests what was their, what was their first, uh, you know, like holy shit or amazing moment where they realized, wow, magic is real. Like they're just amazed. Now, yeah, it seems I have a like, story like that. Okay, I, tell me about your experience. I mean, I had a lot of paranormal things happen to me as a child. I think I kind of repressed them. There may have been some like UFO abduction that I don't remember. But I think what you're really asking is when I was 11 years old and I had the first successful spell and divination done Okay. for, for my classmate who was, of course, yeah. in love with the bad boy, you know, of the class. And like she wanted me to read the cards like does he love me or not and like it showed that he likes her that there's affection so she asked me to do like a spell and i improvised something i took some ingredients at home some necklace and a red thread you know and i blessed it i did uh -huh. like a love binding i gave her this talisman and yeah they got together <laughs> and they started skipping class and they were like um and they were punished for it oh. so i was like wow man like magic is real it works but like it has you know consequences on people's lives so that kind of scared me because it i does. didn't i like i didn't want her to like start skipping school with a bad boy and for them to both drop out but not only that but she after that she was probably like oh can you can you tell the cards about this and and tell about that and readings left and right. They want to know everything after that point. Yeah, that's, of course, I'm private to that. I be, I became a reader later on, but pretty, that it's actually, it was my first job. I never went to do like a regular office jobs or a career. I had a short stint in academic study of religion, anthropology. Okay. But I left and I just became a witch, you know. I I was working at a witch store as an assistant and then I started reading the cards and you know I made websites and that's just what I became kind of randomly and that's not what everybody saw for me like my family was very shocked and they resented it they they didn't approve of my choices right and yeah I had you know a similar experience where my family was kind of shocked and not happy with the choices I had made regarding my spirituality so I can relate to that um now how would you describe your magical style? Or would you say it's more eclectic? It's left-hand path. Um, right. I have a huge appreciation for American folklore mm -hmm. and European folklore. I'm a big believer in oral tradition. So mm -hmm. I try to learn from practitioners directly, um, mm -hmm. from spirits. I'm definitely a demonologist. I have pacts with demons. Mm -hmm. And I commune with them almost um, almost daily. So it's very mediumistic, very spiritualistic path, um, kind of radical. Mm -hmm. I call myself a black magician. And I, you know, I adhere to the left-hand path. I don't even, like, call myself a witch necessarily because I think that is rooted in in nature and in the feminine mysteries. And I was never really strong in that so i don't try to claim the title of a witch even though obviously people call me that yeah it's become uh nowadays it's become a very broad term which can you know mean a lot of things nowadays but um what would you say are some common misconceptions about the left hand path well i mean from the people outside Mm -hmm. They just think it's like being evil. Mm -hmm. And they might be right in a certain sense, but they're just not even looking underneath the surface, just projecting their own 
insecurities. Obviously, it's not about doing like stupid juvenile evil, like, you know, sacrificing cats and dogs right. at the cemetery. Um, but from the people on the inside or in the occult communities, I mm-hmm. think they don't realize how much sacrifice it entails and that it actually means going against all that is sacred and upheld by the society, that it actually means the outlaw path. Mm-hmm. They just, they, they just, unfortunately, what I see is they approach it from a very consumerist standpoint. Like, you know, I want these things, so I'm going to be dealing with demons mm-hmm. and I'll get shit for free, you know, like I'll sell my soul. But they don't know the meaning of what it actually is selling your soul, that it actually means giving away your comfort and your free will to the path. In these spirits, they they come to it from a very entitled standpoint, asking for the lowest material gains, and that's not left hand path, you know. That's black magic, perhaps, but even black magic is something more. You know, I saw you do a post the other day saying um, something to the effect of, if you if you sell your soul or give yourself for some kind of material gain instead of some spiritual gain. It's not good because if you, if you, if you get a material gain and you don't grow, you're not going to be able to hold on to the material gain anyway. If you don't grow as, you know, as a spiritual person. Yeah. And and I really like that you said that. Can you expand on that a little bit? Oh, absolutely. That, that, that quote was, made from an observation from real life because you can manifest things via mm-hmm. magic um, but if you don't manifest a change in yourself then this mm-hmm. new reality it just like won't hold up and that's where a lot of these observed failures then come from you know like people draw something into their lives but it falls apart shortly it doesn't hold up because the overall system of their reality hasn't changed, you know. And that, that's why we need to work the lower magic and the higher magic, you know, both within, you know, and outside. Mm-hmm. I think it's because, like, their their vibration cannot stand the vibration of the change that's come about. Therefore whoever they are, whatever they are, is kind of wither away in, in a sense, I guess you could say. Absolutely. Um, now, your name means uh, breath of darkness, dark life force, or animating darkness. How did your name come about? It's a strange story, really, because so Noara or Noira was a random nickname that I picked up for one of my characters playing Dungeons and Dragons when I was a teenager and then I used it when I registered my first email address so it kind of became my handle on the internet Mm -hmm. and then it became my magical name that's how I became known among the pagans right and then when I became a professional and I decided to separate from my family I wanted to register my magical name as my legal name So that I, you know, don't disgrace the family name. That's kind of how they saw it when I went to the, you know, TV show. My parents were not happy about it. And I didn't want to, like, live a double life. But, (laughs) you know, I was known just as Noira or Noara. And you have to have two names, a first name and a second name. Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't register Noira as a first name. So it had to become a surname. And then I had to add something before that so Mm -hmm. you know i made a little magical spell a little code it it refers to many things you know anima sola of course one of my patrons the in tranquil spirit the woman in hell you know the devil's bride it's also a shortening of anna marie my original birth christening name and then it's a spell together you know darkness come alive keeping the dark current 
alive. So it's a decidedly left hand path name. But no, few people actually call me Anima. <laughs> I have so many names. They just call you Neura or some one of your other names. Um, now, I was reading one of your essays, and you had said in one of your essays, it was about the witch wars, and you said the witch wars are stupid, which they are. If anyone is telling you to give up on a feud, they are not a traitor. They are your friend. And I like that you had mentioned that because some people are so fixated on trying to attack some other practitioner or becoming jealous that they don't see that, you know, it, it's not worth it using up your energy and your resources. And can you expand a little bit on, on that, that essay that you wrote? That well, it's a, it's a sad fact of life, you know, and I have lost um, a lot in these witch wars. I had to learn kind of the hard way through experience. Yeah. And when I wrote that, I kind of mostly wanted to thank and acknowledge the people who were telling me, like, stop this, you know, it goes on forever, like vengeance never ends. Right. It just turns into a perpetual war. And I was lucky to have that one person next to me who convinced me. And I only, you know, like, I only stopped because I didn't want to lose his affections or, like, his respect. But I was seeing red. And... Mm -hmm. Then, you know, as time passes, you realize how your perspective changes. Because back then I was like, oh, you're siding with my enemies. Like, you're a traitor. You should be loyal to me and, like, fight my wars or support me. But he was actually being a true friend by trying to show me the light, you know. And mm -hmm. this is a hard position to be in. I tried to pay it forward, you know, and make other people stop. And they won't. They would instead cut me off. So, you know. Starting fights is so much easier than ending them. You got that right. You definitely got that right. Um, now, is there any particular spirit you enjoy working with the most? I wouldn't say I enjoy working with him, but Lucifer is kind of the big guy. He's there every all the time, everywhere. I have a lifetime pact with him that actually spends numerous lifetimes the the other ones kind of in the order of importance would probably be Samael Mephistopheles Belial mm. I think that when some people approach this path not fully understanding it they're they end up going farther than they intend to they end up, you know, saying, oh, my God, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> I mean, would you agree with that? I I think that if you really want your life to stay the way it is and you just, like, want some small improvement or a small gain, you should, like, be cautious to not get too deep. You know, I think even hiring magicians when you are a profane person, like, it can, yeah, it can take over your life. I don't, because... With, with demons, there is not really a way how to do it safely. Like, once you start dealing with hell, it just creates this tremendous momentum. And I have respect for the practitioners who walk the, you know, the both-hand path, but I just don't see a lot of them. I think it's difficult. Mm -hmm. I think that... Um, I think that a lot of people, like... They don't under they don't fully understand the seriousness of working with demons because you can work with some light beings and you know they may give you some stuff for free, but a lot of demons will say, Okay, I'll do this for you, but what are you gonna do for me? You know, you oh, end absolutely. up you end up owing. You know what I mean? And and uh would you agree with that? I agree fully, and I'm glad that you brought it up. I am amazed every day. How is it even possible that people don't think about you know, owing or having to pay. Like, is there anything as a free lunch in this reality? No, of, of course no. there isn't. And I, you know, I arrange for pacts for people and I have to decline most of the requests because I see that the people, they're just not willing to take it seriously. 
and I don't want them hurt, you know. They they don't even stop and think like there's going to be the condition hell, you know, the asking price. They just make a list as if it was Santa Claus and think <laughs> that this list will just be granted, you know. Yeah. Like, no, you should wait for what hell asks from you and give it a thought. Like, are you really willing to do this? Because it's going to be a riddle, you know. They're not going to tell you flat out what's going to happen and what you should do. They will give you some kind of riddle with multiple meanings. That's how yep. it works. Yeah. All right. Well, um, now you have, um, you're all over social media. You have, uh, you're on Facebook, you're on Instagram, you're on YouTube, Twitter. Uh, tell us a bit about your website. Well, the website is for the, you know, that's like the serious place where my legacy is. That's where I have all of my photography, my modeling portfolio, my writings, um, also the show, show archives. Social media only allows to share short form content. So it's not meant, you know, for serious treatises. Um, even though I try to put things out there which are of serious nature. Mm. Um, but the website is kind of like for the serious inquiry. It's right. always gonna be up there and it's also how to circumvent censorship because I have had stuff taken down from social media for the most ridiculous reasons. Mm -hmm. I agree. I um, that's in fact one reason why we're developing a website as well because you can get away with a lot more, you know, than just having everything on social media. But um, is there anything that you'd like to go ahead and, and, uh, and plug and uh, and talk about before we go ahead and uh, in this chat? I mean, I appreciate dark sorcery. I I think you guys are kind of cool. Um, thank you and i and i appreciate this invitation I'm, i mean i do a live stream show on youtube um every week discussing different things deep topics um even analyzed a movie recently you know occult mysterious sites architecture so if you're looking for something to listen to if you like my voice then go ahead and check it out on youtube yeah, and everybody who's watching, um, uh, check the video description below. The below this video, I will have all of her links below there. Check them all out. Uh, check out her YouTube, her show, Devil's Disciples. A lot of good stuff on there. Um, Anima, it is very good having you on. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your time. You too. Take care. And uh, everybody who's watching, like and subscribe to Dark Sorcery.